crazy. Look at that gray hair. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. What's going on, guys? Cody from Motorcycle MD. In this video, I pulled together my top five favorite cleaning tips for the CMCB 400 450 model carburetors, the twin carb setup. They use it from like 1979 to 86. Same exact style of carbs. Honestly, you could take a dual overhead cam CB750, cut them in half, it's the same exact thing. But many of you may or may not know, I have tons of video step-by-step -step walkthroughs on cleaning carburetors from singles, twins, inline fours, V4s, working on a GL 1200 set right now. Tons of stuff for you guys to use, resources. In the description, I have a link that goes straight to that page. Tons of stuff to look at. An entire a la carte menu of cleaning workshops that I think that you'll love and honestly save tons of money using. And if you're new, welcome. Be sure to check out the channel. I have tons of stuff here for you to use. And subscribe. Lots of stuff coming out all the time. Be sure to join the mailing list. I won't spam you with crazy stuff. Just want to give you notification when new content comes out. So no further introduction needed. My top five favorite cleaning techniques from this course. I think you're gonna love them, very practical to use. Enjoy. Okay, so the main things I wanna point out are where things connect at, okay? So you have very important a, ch a very important choke system that needs to be operating both butterflies and fully closing both butterflies at the same time. Okay, there are tiny springs in here that you need to pay attention to and take pictures of or use this video as reference that need to go back a certain way and I wanna make sure that you fully understand how they're operating to know how they go back together. Okay, as well as springs like this right here. This little spring in the middle. This can actually be removed and it will need to be removed. Getting up on the far side of it Okay, and that will fit in between there. It helps keep down vibration. But knowing you know stuff like that is very important because when you go to take these things apart, they might just fling out on you. But there's not too much. It's just really this this spring here, and a smaller spring, a little clock spring, right, where this rod is actuated by this rod here. Okay, so this rod comes over, attaches to a little spring, and this rod helps function that. So because if I wanted to, I could put my finger here and just function this, but it's not doing anything, okay? But what this is also doing is operating a little bit on this throttle here, okay? Which opens that butterfly up just slightly, so when you apply the choke fully, it's actually opening up the, the throttle plates just a little bit enough for it to get that fuel, that extra fuel to be sucked into the cylinder, okay? So that kind of stuff is important. And you can see in here, in the center of the car, you got a bunch of stuff that's kind of moving all around. And there's actually a specification. You see like a little paw foot down here. I'll show it when we had the carb split. But there's actually a specification for that, for how much movement there should be there. And the accelerator okay. pump. And remember what I was telling you about with the heat and these things? Guess what happened? Mine came out. On its own though, I didn't hit it with air, it just, I found it in my basket apart. The way that it goes back in is ball bearing, spring, and then the brass fitting, okay? But before I do that, I obviously wanna make sure that these orifices are clean. This is the most common part to be dirty, okay? And so I'll try to run this, I don't think that this is the same size, but I'll try to run this down in this bigger hole here just make sure it's all clean. And what I'll do is I'll check this. I'm hitting it with contact cleaner and don't look at it. Don't look at that hole with your eyes wide open without wearing some kind of safety glasses. Because when you look at that and you spray it, that little hole is coming right towards your eyeballs. So I'm just going to kind of turn it kind of out like this away from me and just lightly cover my finger over this main hole and hit it. That has a very, very direct pressurized stream coming out of it, okay? Which it should. If it didn't, you would need to clean that out, and it's not an easy task. What I use is a special ordered tiny, tiny drill bit. I believe this measures out to be a 32. And that's what I found that actually makes it through that hole 
with a little bit of pressure. And I'll put a link below of where you can get drill bits like these. But that went all the way through and it's clear. But more often than not, what I, what I see is this hole right there completely caked to the top and you really got to work at it for a long time. Use a flashlight, look down in there. You should actually be able to shine a flashlight. I don't have mine on me right now, but shine a flashlight onto this hole and see light in that little brass tube right there, okay? Now once you do that, you're going to want to check this because when you squirt the cleaner through here, it goes to that brass one as well as the center one and you're going to hear a little flutter when I use the compressed air. Sounds kind of waffly. That's good. That, that means that that's operational. That ball bearing is moving around and shutting and unshutting where it should be. Okay, so that accelerator pump's clear. We can kind of move on to the jets. So, I use a flashlight for this technique. Let's kind of move this up out of the way. But let's start with our slow speed main jet and our secondary main and the emulsion tube. Obviously, the flashlight helps you discover if there's actually a hole in there. And there is. And there is. Those are pretty big holes, so I imagine there would be. And you can also look into the emulsion tube and just look at the walls on the inside. Do they look like a mirror finish? Do they look kind of dirty? Do they look extremely pitted? If they're very pitted, like the metal's gone, you got to replace it. That's not allowing for a very fluent flow of gas. It's, it's kind of breaking it up as it goes in, and you want a very mirror finish, clean look on the inside of those. And this is our little slow main, or our, our slow jet as well. It's working great. So, the first thing I'm going to do is check each size. Is on each jet, there'll be a number. This number is 118. So what I can do, Come over to my drill bits, grab my micrometer if you want to go this route, and measure out a drill bit that is exactly 1.18. Here's 105, which is pretty close. If you don't have anything that's exactly that, obviously just take a step down and do the exact same thing that we're doing with those cleaners. This is the 116. And I'm going to show you guys how tight of a fit this is. This is that 118. It's pretty tight. Okay, if I had a 118 drill bit and I tried to press it into a 118 hole, you would not be able to get this through right away. You'd have to actually open it up slightly to allow for it to go through because a one millimeter hole going inside of a one millimeter socket, it's going to be a very press fit system. It's not like a little bit larger of a thousandth or a hundred thousandth. You know, it's exactly the same size, so they won't fit exactly right. But you can take a 118, and that's what I like to do on idle jets, because it kind of opens them up just a slight hair, you know, and I think it helps them out. But again, it doesn't matter really that much. It's just a great way to check to make sure that, let's say you put the carbs back together and it still runs crazy rich, and you, you say, okay, well this is a 110 main, let me check to make sure that it is actually a 110 main. You see, because people will take a bigger drill bit and drill out that 110 main to a 115, and it's no longer a 110, it's a 115. So you had a bigger main jet, and you're like, well, that's why it's running rich. You know, so that's that. Just polish up the outside, and I do this with every carburetor set I get. And then I'll do one extra thing with these, and I'll show you, then I'll, and then you guys can get to work. So what I'll do, I'll take that same piece of steel wool and I'll make a little bullet out of it. Kind of thick, but not too thick. And I'll take it and I'll run it on the inside of this emulsion tube. And as I'm going in, I'm spinning it and tightening it so that I can see it come out the other end. If you can't get it all the way through there, which now I am, right there at the top, and I'll just spin this emulsion tube Rip that back out, give it a hit of air or a contact cleaner, they're both the same thing. I'll shine a light right back up through there and then I'll look and see just how polished that got it and it did an amazing job. And then the last thing you'll do 
which I actually probably should have done first. But we're, we're going to use the same steel wool to clean these seats. And this is how we're going to play this game. All right. So we're going to take a piece of steel wool. I'm going to break it off. Turn it into a little bullet. All right. I'm going to take this. I'm going to work it down inside of there just like I did with the emulsion tube. But then I'm going to use my tiny little flathead screwdriver, kind of shove it down in there more. Then I'm going to get a good bite on the steel wool and just work this around. I'm not scraping the sides of the walls with the flathead screwdriver because that, that will screw it up. I just grabbed a little bit of the steel wool so we can kind of grab onto it. And I'll just polish the seat. And you'll know you're all the way down there, and the end of it makes this little tit. Okay, I'm trying to light down in there. Make sure it's nice and clean. Okay, if you have float issues, like the floats needle won't seem to seal, even with a brand new one, it's probably because the seat inside of here is just too worn out. These can, de these can deteriorate too with water and moisture, if it's been sitting for a, you know two decades um, with dirty gas, sometimes the very, very seat in that little hole down in there can deteriorate. And no matter what float valve you buy, new or old, it will not seal it or it'll drip or have like a slow drip. That's usually the cause, okay? But when you have a stuck float issue, like the, the motor floods or the airbox floods with gas or uh, you won't get gas down to the carbs, this whole system here is what's reliant. This lets gas in and out through the gas tube from the tank. This is what seals and unseals the float. Okay, very, very crucial component. So I'm going to go ahead and take my contact cleaner spray. I want it to come out that way. So I'm going to spray down in there real good. Hit with some co compressed air. That one's done. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Again, if you're new, welcome. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Lots of awesome content here if you love working on your own motorcycle. If you need help with your motorcycle, be sure to check out the Inner Circle membership. There we have a private Facebook group that you can get involved with. I'm there helping people out on whatever they're doing to their bike. And again, carburetor videos galore in the link below. Check it out. I'll see you guys next time. Cody from Motorcycle MD. Bring you guys some quality tips and tricks for your next build or your daily rider. It's true. Later.